Okay, we're alive. There we go. <coughs> All right, here we go. Welcome. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> this is a lesson on escaping disadvantage. Okay. Uh, to start, actually, wait, we have Dan who doesn't need this lesson, but. No, oh. I need it. Oh, you do? All right. <laughs> Come sit down. We just started. Oh. So, lesson on getting out of disadvantage. Uh, we're going to recap first on what we learned at the end of the last one. If you aren't here for the end of the last one, uh, it should be pretty easy to understand. Getting out of disadvantage, we did learn starts of this from last week, or last time, on getting out of the corner, which is also technically a disadvantageous position, right? So. To recap, getting out of the corner, right? The options you have, right? You got roll, you got jump, you got attack, right? These are your basic options. Okay, you can see that, good. So, those are your basic options. Most people, when trying to stop you from getting out of the corner, will try and cover one of these options and stand in a position accordingly, right? So, for example, if we have the stage, if we have you in the corner, you see your opponent is trying to cover a roll. They'll stand at your roll distance, right? And then if they see you jump, they might dash back to cover you jumping, right? Can they see? Okay, good. Um, or, vice versa, if they think you're going to jump, they'll either dash back to this position already, or meet you air to air, right? So usually what you want to do is um, uh, hold on, let me read my notes. Yeah, but a good player won't only be standing in these areas to cover these options. They'll be using these options. Sorry, let me close this for. <laughs> um, these options will be, uh, the, where they stand could also be a bait on a good player, right? They might dash back to bait to like watch you jump in, and then as, soon, as you choose a defensive option, either running in or rolling, they'll come forward and cover that straight away, right? So being ambiguous with what you choose to do in the corner is very, very important, right? So, um, the biggest thing that we talked about when it came to getting out of the corner is taking control of the space that your opponent gives you and moving around that space to bait out their, their options, right? So again, say you're here, and say your opponent is here, covering anything when it comes to aggressive options from the role. The space that they have is all this, right? Well, all the space that you have is this, right? It's not much, but you do have space. So moving up and down, or left and right in this, in this area, and uh, baiting out different options is a big way to get out of the corner. For example, if your opponent is trying to cover your jump, jumping up high, right? Something like this. So jumping up, you say like they're trying to cover your jump and meet you at air. Jumping straight up and then falling right down as they as they come up means that they're above you and then that gives you an opportunity to run underneath them, right? If that makes sense. Um, that's, an, that's one way. Or jumping, double jumping, and then drifting. Let me, sorry. Just say, right, again, you have, this, you have this much space, right? Jumping and then double jumping or just jumping in general to make it look like you're trying to get past the point where they have control and they try to meet you, but then you drift back again, either with, like in place or whatever, and then they might overextend and go over you or something like that. And just making sure you're moving around this area and not just standing still and trying to get out of the area into their space in one go. That's a big thing. Trying to get out of their space and trying to get back in the center in one go is a big thing that you gotta be not like careful not doing because um, taking your time out of the corner is very, very beneficial. So, next. Um, any questions on that bit? 
No? All good? All right, sweet. Um, another way to get out of the corner is overshooting. We talked about this last time. If you were going to roll out of the corner, right, and the person is standing at this distance, it covers a roll. It also covers jumping over because it, you'll be underneath, uh, on top of them, right? So going up close to them, either dashing or walking or whatever, and then going here and then rolling past them by overshooting, that gets you where? Into the center stage, which gives you another chance to reset to neutral. And if you do get hit, you're closer to the center stage, making it less painful and less, uh, less of a punishment when you get, if you get hit, because you're, you're not getting as sent far off stage. Same thing with attacking, right? Because we're just mainly talking about rolling and jumping. Attacking as well. Instead of attacking in this area, most people, when they see you run at them to attack, will dash back here. So then what you do is, instead of running and attacking where they are to try and get out of the corner, you overshoot and attack in this area where they would be, if that makes sense, yeah? So like, just say I'm playing sheep, right? And I'm here, and I want to do a short up nair at them. But then they dash and jump away and avoid my nair and punish it if we're punished. Instead of that, you put them in a space where um, it hits them in their dash animation or as they're jumping, because most people when they're trying to hit you with an aerial in the corner, we'll do a falling aerial rather than a rising aerial, right? Because you're in the corner on the ground. So getting to this position and stopping them when they jump or stopping them in their dash animation because in their dash animation, they cannot shield, right? When you start a run, it starts with standing still into a dash animation into the run, right? In this part here, the dash, you cannot shield. You can only jump, dash attack, or up smash, right? Um, yeah, I think that's all of them. So if you can hit them in this period, or as they're jumping, that's very beneficial. So how long would the uh, dash animation be? So they're different with each character. Yeah. So some characters have really short dash animations, like Sheik, one of the best dash, sh dash uh, to shields in the game. Or someone like Little Mac, who has a really, really long dash. It takes a long time for them to like shield. That's another thing you should look at. Looking at the character specifics, it doesn't take too long to learn. Just look at them running and dash and shield, and then you'll see, OK, it takes about this time for them to pull up a shield. You know what I mean? But each character is different. But most characters have that sort of, as soon as they, as soon as they in, at the start here, for the next few frames, they can't do anything. So if you see them dash, you just overshoot from the spot that they're st they were standing at. Do you know, that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than trying to hit them where they are, see where they were standing, overshoot it by a few steps, and you usually you'll get that. All right, so next. Um, again, getting out of the corner. Crossing up is very good. Just say they're in the center stage, and you get, or maybe a little bit less than center stage, right? A little bit closer to you. And you get a jump in. Most of the time, if you're trying to reset to neutral, you're trying to get center stage, right? So crossing up their shield is pretty, pretty good in this situation because it gets you in the middle. If they hit you, they don't, you don't get sent as far off stage. And it gives you a more of a chance, especially if they're really bad out of shields options behind them, right? Then it, that's like something you can abuse. But only crossing up is not the way to go because you can, that's another thing that I'm talking about in terms of like forcing it. It is a good option, but only doing it is just the same as brute forcing your way into the center. So then crossing up, either you're landing on top, uh, sorry, in front of them, behind them, or landing, going above their shield, then double jumping away, right? Or doing a different aerial, like a downer that goes, that like goes downwards like chic and stuff. I'll get more into that later when it comes to landing. Um, and the biggest thing, again, is once you've escaped the corner, I don't know why I keep erasing this line. Once you escape the corner, not being aggressive, too aggressive after you've escaped. Because the goal of getting out of the corner and getting out of disadvantage is to reset to neutral, not to start your offense, right? So just say that you get here, you get past them, right? But then you like do an attack backwards, and then they jump over you. And again, now you're in the corner. Do you know what I mean? So once you've taken that space, just reset to neutral. or only go for offensive thing if they do something really punishable 
or give you a really big opening like a laggy attack or something like that or they do a dash attack or they you know do something really stupid but yeah biggest thing i want you to focus on is once you get out of the corner or land from disadvantage not trying to just attack them straight away reset to neutral find another opening that's the big, best way you'll you'll be able to to uh gain you know an advantage later on all right and that's landing right i'm sorry that's out of the corner okay that's a recap a bit of a long one but it's a pretty important thing um now we're on to landing So we're trying to land, right? So let me make this, let me get a bit more space above the stage, right? So that's the stage. Um, landing. Biggest thing when you're trying to land is not going for the same option every time, yeah? Quick and simple. If you always go for a fastball aerial, then that's gonna be easily baited out, right? Biggest thing. Um, um, people, when they're trying to get out of this advantage, especially when landing, they mistake it as trying to not get hit. That's sort of true, but not really. Your goal is to reset to neutral, right? So getting hit can sometimes, you know, be okay. But as long as you're not, like, if you're, if you're not rushing and not trying to, like, only not get hit, right? For example, when you're playing against the fox, right? Most people, their instinct when they're getting hit at low percent is to like air dodge, right? But then they, you get frame trapped, you know what I mean? So that's, you're using resources to like try and get out of this manage straight away and not get hit. That's not trying to land, that's just trying to not get hit. And, but in doing that, a fox will be able to frame trap all of your options at low percent. Hey, uh, this is actually something I was talking about. You might want to remember, this is about the whole like oh, juggling yes. bit. I'm, I'm just tired. Yeah, no worries. So, um, yeah, so landing, right? For instance, again, with Fox, trying to, trying to get at it, trying to not get hit as soon as you, like, like not, trying to not get hit in succession is a big mistake because Fox at low percent to mid percent, if you try to air dodge or attack, they have options to be all of that. So you're just gonna get hit anyway, but because you're trying to land, right? So for instance, just say you're here. Sorry, this is the Fox and this is you. If you were to get dash attacked and you get put above them, and then you air dodge or falling aerial, you're right on the ground again, which is like okay normally. But Fox's frame traps, they rely on him being close to you. So getting hit again from uh, get air dodging and then uh, too low to the ground and getting hit by another dash attack, what does it do? Puts you in the exact same situation you were just in, right? So then if you keep air dodging, you're just gonna keep going and looping in this same area. Is that getting out of disadvantage? No, not really. It's, uh, you're just getting hit over and over again. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but most of the times it will not work because a fox or a characters that can frame trap like this are waiting for those specific options. So instead, it's actually better to take those hits and get sent higher up, right? Just say he dash attacks and then up airs you. Let's just say this is at a stage that's not battlefield and they only have buy plots, right? And they hit you, right? Just say this is a buy plot. And they hit you, you get to here, you're still above the ground, right? But then they hit you again, right? And you get to here. But you're really far up the ground. But you're in the air with all your resources, except you'll be in tumble. But Fox, has to get up here, has to expend resources, right? He has to double jump up there to get to you. So if you just take the damage and let yourself get up here, then he has to guess now from where you're going to go here, are you going to go here, are you going to go here, are you going to go to ledge? And there's a lot bigger, more uh, ambiguous ways to get down than just the air dodging out it gets done, right? It means taking the hit, going up high, forcing them to have to come up to you, which gives you more openings because then they have to expend more to hit you. All on the ground, all they have to do is wait and dash attack or jump in there, you know what I mean? I would show an in-game example, but I only made this less than last night, so sorry, I've been very busy. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Any questions? Because that's a pretty big one. Um, okay. 
Once you're in the air, though, just say you're in the air, right? You're not on the ground. If you're in the air, all the way up here, your opponent's in the air. What are your options to get down? You have aerials. Uh, <laughs> a, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got air dodges. And you got jumps. And then you have character specifics. Right? So, let's start with aerials. Okay? Aerials, usually, if you have a decently fast aerial, or a lingering aerial, or a low end lag aerial, falling, fast falling with that aerial is very good at a disadvantage, especially if you're Rob, or Sheik, or Link, do you know what I mean? Or Wolf, maybe not Sheik in that instance, but yeah, it can be very good. But again, goes back to my same point at the start, do not use the same option every time. Don't spam one option, right? Oh my god, whatever. Biggest thing, don't spam one option, yeah? But in saying this, aerials are really good at a disadvantage. Falling there is Pikachu. Ness, if you're mid, like, mid-height above the ground can be okay, but most of the time will be baited out in that same situation I was talking about, right? Um, these attacks force your opponent to respect you, right? Which means they probably won't go up air to air to beat you, which means they give you a lot more space to move around in this area when coming down, right? So if, they, if you can get your opponent to respect you, it opens up a lot more different options. Okay, so another one. Next, oh wait, let me see. What do I have here? Um, but again, most people in doing these aerials will be like, oh, it's a good option at its advantage, so I'm going to keep using it. And they keep using it and they keep getting punished, and they don't realize in their brain, oh, I'm getting punished for a safe option when it's not safe if it's being read, right? or waited for. Um, actually, before air dodge, we'll start with jumps. One thing people tend to do um, is after getting hit up immediately, will expend their double jump, right? Straight away, whether they get hit off stage, whether they get hit upwards, right? That's something that people tend to do. Another thing is that aerials out of hit stun. Um, but people who do that know that. And um, they should be adjusting once they get punished for it. Um, one thing that doing this double jump, as soon as you get hit, does is exhausts one of your most important resources in the air straight away, especially for offstage, right? Puts you really high, gives you less mix ups because you've jumped really high, right? Um, it only limits, it only gives you the options of drift as your mix ups or landing. Special, spe character specific down airs and stuff like that, right? Sometimes, after getting hit, doing nothing and just landing is the way to go. Sometimes people will not be ready for you to just drift and land. For one instance, if you watch some of my sets against uh, Ants, Nick, when I'm playing Cloud, he up throws me, right? Instead of just falling, I mean jumping straight away to try and get his advantage and maybe go to ledge or try and land, I'll just do nothing and fall and then tech, you know what I mean? Because he's like, oh, he's going to do something. But just landing, just like drifting, and just going to the ground. And even if you're not in his sun, just landing, or A landing, or teching, people aren't going to sometimes be ready for that. So that's another option you have. Again, not something you should always do, because uh, in that same situation, if Nick just sees I'm drifting, can just up smash me when I land, right? But it is another option you have, rather than just jumping straight away. Because it gives you a lot of time to fall in this area while still being able to do whatever you want. So the your opponent has to guess whether or not you're gonna do something, right? Or use an option that covers multiple things. But not every character has that. Okay. Um, get, jumping over your opponent when you're in disadvantage to get into center stage is okay. But doing it too high is a big mistake that people tend to do. Falling down 
after getting sent high, and then double jumping low to give your opponent less time to react to which way you're going is a good way to like use your double jump, if that makes sense. But you don't have, also have to double jump into the center. Double jumping into the center is very good because if you get hit when you're landing, you're still in the center, so you, get, you have less space to get hit away. Right? But sometimes jumping and then jumping back into the corner, and then using the options that we learned to get out of the corner is better. Right? Um, One thing is when you people when you double jump, most people, right? This is like talking about what I just said. When you double jump out of the corner or out of the air, people will dash back to like cover the spot that you're gonna land in. And seeing that, that's where you then that's where you that's where you then drift back and take the space that they've given you because they've given you this much space now when they dash back, right? When when they were standing here, you didn't have that space, but because they dashed back. They gave you so much space to just land. And then you've reset to neutral, and you've done it. You've accomplished your goal of getting out of disadvantage. And you don't have to do anything else. You just reset to neutral and try and gain an advantage uh, through neutral. All right, what's next? Um, we've done jumping. So oh yeah, that's a, big, that's a really big important thing, what I just said there. You should really take note of that, the space that's given after you double jumped, or the space that you don't have. Because if you try and force to get over them, you're just going to get hit. OK. Next thing, air dodge. Right? Air dodging after double jumping or getting really high is pretty good. Fast fall, neutral air dodge for the characters that can do it. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just talking about fast fall air dodges. Uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously, you cannot do them. Um, it's fast fall, neutral air dodge in a situation when getting juggled with someone can help when people are really quick to try and cover your your landing with an aerial. Whether they do it from as soon as you jump up or get hit up, that they, if they come up straight away with an aerial, fast fall air dodging past them is really good because they're going up, you're going down, right? And you're invincible, they're throwing an attack, it misses. Or if they're like really close to the ground and they try to end up do like an aerial right as you're landing, again, it's just a smaller area, but they're going up, you fast fall air dodge down, you go through them, you're invincible, right? It's pretty good. Um, but this can, again, be heavily baited out and punished. It is a lot harder to punish in this game because neutral air dodge is busted. So if someone is really bad at covering this, you can just spam this the whole game and you'll be fine. But once someone is good at it, it's heavily punished and you will just lose your stock for it. So feel it out, feel your opponent out. Are they good at covering the fast neutral air dodges? If not, spam them. Uh, if they are, use it as a mix-up. But again, this option really only benefits those characters who are heavy, fast fallers, medium fallers. Those floaty characters, not as helpful because they just don't fall fast enough. Because sometimes when you go up and you fast fall through them, the other person falls faster than you after going up anyway, and they just follow your option. Right? So if you're going to do a fast fall air dodge as a floaty, most of the time you're going to do it lower to the ground. But again, it's still an option. Um, and remember, after this, your goal is to reset to neutral. So fastball air dodging and then pressing an attack can work sometimes. But again, that's another thing that people will usually bait out because after a fastball air dodge, it's hard to punish if they're not ready. So most people will get hit after an attack. So, but people will just wait for that attack and punish it. So again, after you fastball air dodge, reset to neutral unless they're really ag over aggressive, right? And then they give you a, a reason to start pressing a button. You need a reason to press a button after that air dodge. Otherwise, you're just mashing, right? Mm, this is where, after landing all these three things, you start mixing up between the three. And uh, based on the positioning of your opponent, and sometimes it's a guessing game, because sometimes your opponent's baiting you. Sometimes it is a guessing game. So sometimes a mix-up works. Sometimes a mix-up doesn't work. That's why it's a mix-up, right? Um, Sorry, I'm lost where I was in my notes. OK. Question. Yep. So what's one of, well, what are some of the misconceptions? I guess, like, really common misconceptions about this new player when it comes to, to landing? Do you think it's just like 
not mixing up between the three what are the things. what are the misconceptions yeah, yeah, yeah thinking yeah. that once they've done something once they can do it forever okay. right it can work against people who are inexperienced right but just because it happened once doesn't mean that it can happen again you have to find different avenues once they've adapted right it's like people get so frustrated like why can i not land you know it's because you're just brute forcing it worked as a mix-up once, but then you just start using that same option over again. It's no longer a mix-up. It's just brute forcing your way down. Remember, your goal, do not spam one option, yeah. right? Uh, and as well as return to neutral. I'll write that down. Oh, God. To neutral. Right? Biggest things is, biggest misconceptions is that once they get out of disadvantage, they need to start pressing buttons, getting past, like getting, getting their offense going. But no, you set to neutral. Or once they found an option that they only use that option, or they don't, like they find, just say they find three mix-ups, they only use those three mix-ups and they don't try to expand on their, on their, their repertoire of disadvantage options, right? That's a big thing. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay, yeah. cool. Any other questions? Sweet. Uh, hey, um, did you <coughs> have any advice for feeling out opponents? Advice for feeling out opponents? Or in particular when you're feeling um, out What do I look for in an opponent when I'm, when I'm landing, is what you're saying? Or just like? Yeah, when you're, when you're landing. Uh, I, basically, I look at timings and spacings, right? Are they the type of person to go up really high into the air and catch you? Or are they the type of person to wait and preemptively catch you? Right? Are, they, are they spamming aerials like, for instance, Carcetus likes to do these preemptive up airs uh, in a space that you might be. Or when Kai is playing hero and he run back forward smashes in an aerial because people usually just jump into it. Right? I see, do they do that sort of stuff? And do I play around that? And then as well as like spacing. When I jump, are they reacting immediately? Like are they jumping? Or if I jump, are they dashing back? Or do they take their time or like not realize I've jumped because they're looking at themselves or something, you know what I mean? Um, if I see that there's someone that reacts immediately to what I do, then that's where I start trying to... So just say there's someone that reactively dashes back when I jump. That's where I start playing my space, right? That's where I'm like, okay, I need to make sure I play in the area here, right? And I use as much as of this space that has been given to me while trying to get back into the center. But if there's someone that's late to react, then I can sometimes overstep my boundaries and force it, right? So you got to really re realize how good is your opponent at reacting to where you are in disadvantage, right? OK. Any other questions? Oh, did that answer your question, actually? Josh? Uh, yeah, that is. Perfect. Um, hey, Tara. Um, OK. Another thing with these options. I, I really did, I did, um, I did touch on it earlier, but not just drifting in a straight line when you're falling at a disadvantage, right? A lot of people, a lot of people, once they jump, we just go, okay, I'm just gonna fall and go to this direction, or I'm gonna go down, you know what I mean? But as you can see, right, that's a straight line. So the person could just stand anywhere in this area, just go straight up, and it covers as soon as you're trying to get there, right? So. Most of the time, this is something actually I was taught pretty early on, is that you don't want your disadvantage line to look like this unless they're, they're really bad. You want your, your line that your character is making to be like, you know, you know what I mean? Something more like that. Not exactly like that, but something, uh, depending on your character's airspeed, you can make that an option, right? So making sure that if you drift in and you see them drift out, so just say, right, being ambiguous, right? Uh, if your character has the airspeed, drifting in, but making it look like you're going to drift full center stage, and then as soon as they start moving out, you drift back. But then if they drift again, then maybe you just go straight down, right? Being reactive with that sort of stuff and not just going in a straight line at a disadvantage. Um, okay, and this brings me on to my last point, character specifics, right? Moves that are really good at a disadvantage, like characters that move you down. Sheik down air, Bowser, zero suit, Yoshi down B, Bowser down B. It doesn't have to be an aerial. It could be a special. Teleports, you know what I mean? Um, 
Yeah. Uh, using these variables will mess up the timing of your opponent, depending on how you use it, right? Let's say your opponent is waiting here, and the type of person just wait for you to fall on them and punish. But most of the time, people react to you landing or preemptively cover you landing. But if you can use a move that stalls you in the air for a little bit, like a down air or a down B, and then mix up their timing out of shield, they might drop the shield too early, thinking you've already landed. But nope, you, that small timing just instantly gives you a punish. You'll see me spam that with Sheik a lot. Again, another option is to do it from really high when people are really tempted to go up early, right? So if there's someone that after you decipher I'm playing Sheik, I jump down B, and people try to cover that, but they're too late, but people are really quick to try and cover it in an area where I do it safe. Then I down air immediately. Again, it goes, they're going up, I'm going down. And if they don't have a good hitbox, it'll beat, I'll beat them, right? So that's a big thing. Um, um, in saying that, I've been talking about it the entire time. I'm going to ask a question. What's the big thing that I've been talking about in terms of disadvantage, in terms of timing between you and your opponent, and which ways you are going? Anyone got an answer? Can I spam one option? No, timing, not oh, timing. Right. like timing and spacing of your of you and your opponent. I've been talking about it this entire time. Anyone? It's okay if you don't get it because I'm going to tell you anyway. But I, I really want to know if someone's gotten it. No? Is it uh, whether they're looking to preempt or just react? Sort of. Uh, it's what were you going to say? Uh, being ambiguous and uh, just. Nah. No, you're close. But no, it's the pacing of how you're falling and how they're coming up to meet you. Right? For instance, what I was talking about again. The down air. I'm going down, and they're coming up, which means the timing for them to catch me is a lot more strict, right? But if I fall at a pace, right? Let's say I double jump, and they're already in the air. Oh my god, that was the worst line ever. <laughs> to say I'm here, I double jump, and they're already in there, and I do nothing but follow them. They're landing. They're, they're moving at the same speed. Maybe give or take, depending on the small speed. So it gives them so much time to realize what I'm doing and cover the areas that I want to be in. But if I can use my fast fall air dodges, my delayed double jumps, it changes the timing in which we're meeting, right? They're, they're going up, I'm going down, or they're going down and I'm going up. It makes it a lot harder for them to know when, where I'm going to be and how to punish it. So that's a big thing, the pacing of how you're falling. So I need, you guys should really keep, keep that one in mind. Um, um, but yeah, if you are falling at the same pace, it's easier for your opponent to follow frame trap and keep you at a disadvantage. Using fast fall air dodges, most uh, aerials or moves that change your momentum or well-timed double jumps, not just up, to up high, but even down low, maybe right close to the ground or in the middle of the, the air, right? Um, these changing and timings can make your opponent mess up and force them to make more guesses than reactions. If you can make your opponent guess and where they don't know, it's pretty beneficial because you know it's a guess. They're not guaranteed to get it right. It gives you more of a chance to like get back and return to neutral. Right? And that was the biggest thing. Any questions about that? Okay. Now that's basically the a good the good ways on how to get a disadvantage. But if all else fails, what's the one rule I always say? Someone say it. Thank you. Go to ledge. <laughs> if you cannot land, if you cannot get to center stage, if you cannot land in the corner, if you cannot land if past your opponent, if they're just that good at catching your disadvantage, give yourself another chance. Go to the ledge. Get some invincibility. Right? Give yourself more options. From the ledge, you have what? Aerials from the ledge. Like go jump. You have uh, rolls. You got neutral getup. You have jump, double jump. You have let go jump air dodge. You have let go jump special move, right? You have so many different options that it's another guessing game all in itself, which then, if you get off the ledge, brings you right back to the first thing we started on, getting out of the corner, right? And then if you hit you, getting out of the corner, what does that bring you? Back to landing. So it's, it's all a circle, right? And if you can't do one, right? If you can't land, try and get out of the corner. 
If you can't get out of the corner, go to the ledge and then try to get out of the corner. You know what I mean? It's, it's all about trying to figure out which one can you do in the situation. Are they good at landing catching? Are they good at ledge tracking? Which one can you, uh, if they're good at all, then it really is just a timing thing. How good are you at getting their timing or understanding your mix-ups that make it harder for them to guess or react the way you're going? That's pretty much it. Um, let me check my notes one more time. I'm just gonna read my notes from <laughs> what I read. It's a bit easier. Um, too many times I see people not sure what to do in disadvantage and just force one way in the center stage. That's where changing what you're doing and picking a different option is better. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't work. A good player, it can work every now and then, but you shouldn't use that once in a blue moon as a thing, oh, that it worked against this top player once. It should keep working. No, because they're gonna adapt to that, right? That's a big thing. People will think just because it worked once or it worked once against a top player especially, it should work again and again and again, but not if they're covering it. Um, yeah, just go to ledge, try to use things we learned about escaping the corner and the ledge play uh, as a way to reset to neutral. Um, good players are still gonna keep you in the, in the corner, but this is where your patience and their patience and your understanding of your options and your understanding of their options comes into play. Who has better understanding? Capitalizing on the small openings they give you, right? Not just the big ones to reset the neutral. Maybe they give you a tiny bit of space. Take that space, right? Capitalizing on the small ones and slowly getting out of the corner, taking every little thing you get rather than only looking for the big options will really help you get out of the corner or just or when landing. Um, yeah, pretty much it. Any questions? All good? All right, sweet. Thank you very much. This has been How to Land. A lot more organized, I think, than my last one. Um, yeah, I hope everyone learned something. Hands, did you learn something? All right, nice, very nice. Oh, there you. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, remember to upload this. And yeah, sorry, I've been, I've got to upload like, a lot of shit. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, any questions right now before I stop recording so I can answer them on the recording at all? It doesn't have to be specific. Oh, oh. Yeah? What are some of the uh, like knowledge check landing habits of interstaters that you can think of off the top of your head, seeing as we've got the action? Like, you mean, like, what do, you, what do I think interstaters usually do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, okay. what do you think that they'll use as, like, a knowledge check, right? That would be good for people playing as interstaters the first time. So, rather than, I'll give you, first, one thing that does come to mind, rather than an interstater covering a landing option, an interstater getting out of disadvantage, right? right? Because getting out of disadvantage is very important. Someone like Jadizel, their knowledge check is falling down air as Young Link. Will they fast fall it or will they not? Because if they fast fall it, it lands on the ground. If they don't fast fall it, it bounces off the shield. But if it bounces off the shield, the hitbox is disabled for a little bit until it starts going back down again. So then if you can shield that first bounce, then you can punish it afterwards. So stuff like that. But again, the thing that people will do in terms of um, covering disadvantage is neutral get up. If you're doing neutral get up, any top player in Australia will destroy you for it. You got Shirks, you got J Dizzle, you got Didi, especially if you're playing against Didi when he has bike on the ledge. You really gotta, really gotta mix up there, right? Um, neutral get up is a big thing people tend to do from the ledge that is really covered by all interstaters at the top level, as well as the jumping and falling in a straight line sort of thing. Yeah, that's pretty big. All right, any other questions? All right, we're done. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something. I want you guys to focus on don't spam one option, return to neutral, go to the ledge. Yeah? All right. Thanks.